Thank you, Mr. Levin. Now I'd like to introduce our witness, Mr. Daniel Werfel, Principal Deputy Commissioner of the Internal Revenue Service. Thank you, Mr. Werfel, for being with us today. The committee has received your report, and it will be made part of the formal hearing record. You will have five minutes for your oral remarks. You're now recognized. Chairman Camp, Ranking Member Levin, and members of the committee, thank you for the opportunity to appear before you today to discuss the progress we have made thus far in charting a path forward for the IRS and what we hope to accomplish in the future. The report we released on Monday describes a number of important findings, aggressive actions, and next steps for the IRS. The problems with the 501c4 application process that were uncovered by the Treasury Inspector General for Tax Administration have created significant concerns for taxpayers, and it is incumbent upon us to take swift action to ensure accountability, fix the problems that occurred, and thoroughly examine other aspects of IRS operations. Over the past month, an ongoing review of the events described in the TIGDA report has shed further light on the management failures that occurred within the IRS and the causes of those failures. There was insufficient action by IRS leaders to identify, prevent, address, and disclose the problems that emerged with the review of applications for tax-exempt status. Our report outlines management deficiencies and the steps that must be taken to correct them. Importantly, the report does not provide a complete and final set of answers. Instead, it offers an initial set of conclusions and action steps, along with an explanation of the additional reviews and investigations underway. While fact-gathering is still ongoing, we have not found evidence of intentional wrongdoing by anyone at the IRS or involvement in these matters by anyone outside of the IRS. Furthermore, there is no current evidence of the use of inappropriate screeners or other types of criteria in other IRS operations beyond those discussed in the IG report. We recognize, however, that there is public concern regarding the criteria used for applications for tax-exempt status, and more needs to be done to evaluate our screening criteria and procedures. We will therefore establish a review process by which screening criteria and procedures across the IRS will be periodically assessed to safeguard against any risks of inappropriate criteria. In addition to this important review, I also want to briefly mention some of the actions that we have taken and will take to address the problems we have found. First, we have installed new leadership at all five levels of the IRS senior executive managerial chain that had responsibility over the activities identified in the IG report. In addition, we have empaneled an accountability review board to provide recommendations within 60 days and later, if needed, on additional personnel actions that should be taken. Next, immediately upon learning that be on the lookout or BOLO lists with inappropriate criteria were still in use, we suspended the use of any such lists in the application process for tax-exempt status. Next, we have established a new voluntary process for certain taxpayers who have been in our backlog for more than 120 days to gain expedited approval to operate as a 501c4 tax-exempt entity. This is a self-certification process, which allows them a streamlined path to tax-exempt status. If they agree, they will operate within defined limits and thresholds of political and social welfare activities. Next, we will establish an enterprise risk management program across the IRS to provide a common framework for capturing, reporting, and addressing risk. This is intended to ensure that such information is brought to the attention of the IRS commissioner and other IRS leaders and external stakeholders in a timelier manner. Next, we will initiate additional internal and external education and outreach about the role of the national taxpayer advocate in assisting taxpayers in resolving problems with the IRS. I also want to point out that our pursuit of broad-based reforms in the IRS does not mean that we believe the specific challenges and concerns identified in the IG report on 501c4s are necessarily present in other parts of the organization. In fact, I believe that any comprehensive review of IRS operations must recognize that many, the many critical successes that the IRS has had in carrying out its mission over the last several years. The IRS is, committing, is committed to correcting its mistakes, holding individuals accountable as appropriate, and establishing control elements that will help us mitigate the risks we face. 
The employees of the IRS are committed to our mission and to operating with integrity and fairness to all. The IRS serves a vital purpose for this country, and we need to earn and maintain the trust of the American people in order to accomplish our mission. We are firmly moving in that direction, and we will continue to report on our progress on a regular basis as we fulfill our commitments. Mr. Chairman, Ranking Member Levin, that concludes my statement. I would be happy to answer your questions.